All things business card. Yes, no, or maybe so. This is the 365 Days of Multi-Level Marketing Journey to Freedom Podcast with Rome Bachelor, where Rome shares his daily journey from down and out to total financial freedom in one year, along with pro tips, tricks, strategies, and tools to help you join in on the journey. Now, here's Rome with today's Journey to Financial Freedom Podcast. So from time to time, I get asked, what do I put on my business card? And so today, uh, for those that ask that question or will ask me in the future, I'm going to refer you right back to this. And hopefully it helps some of those listeners that are wondering the same thing at this very moment. What about business cards? So do I use business cards? I have. Have I wasted a lot of time, effort, and money, and expectation on something that typically doesn't work? Yes, I have. But are there ways to make business cards productive, useful in acquiring and building a business? Absolutely. And I'm going to share some of the top ideas I've ever gotten throughout the years on business cards, including one that has helped one gentleman I know become a seven-figure earner and recruit personally over 300 people, developing 12 or 13 leader organizations because of a simple use of a cheap tool called a business card. So all that's coming up. So first of all, business cards, what's the downside? The downside is typically they don't work. Typically what happens to them? They get tossed in a trash can or lay in a shelf or in a book or somewhere for years and nothing ever occurs. They get just, it's just a wasted, a wasted piece of paper. And that's just the truth of the matter. However, there are creative ways to use business cards. There are even little courses. You can even go to YouTube and write business cards for network marketing and see what comes up. I'm sure there are other suggestions beyond the scope of this episode today that might give you some value. So that's tip number one. Tip number two is I prefer, at least at this point in my life, I prefer not to use a business card. I prefer to use a sticky pad. A sticky pad, yes, a sticky pad, a yellow sticky pad. Here's why. Because you can leave a sticky pad at the ATM with a little message on it and somebody might call you. You can't do that very well with a business card and nobody's going to pick up a business card, but a sticky pad creates curiosity, a sticky note or at the gas pump. So that's up to you. There are people doing really well with sticky note marketing as long as they live in the right area and their offer and their ad is right. And that's a whole nother topic, making sure your ad is good enough that somebody will call you. So for passive marketing, where you're actually leaving out like an ad, almost like a little flyer, you can't, the business cards get very few calls, but sticky notes get a little bit more response in cold marketing than a business card does if it's the right ad and you can handwrite it or you can get a stamper and stamp the right uh the right message the right headline and the right contact information or maybe even a free giveaway of some type to get people to reach out to you or reach back to you in some form and that has some value now do i you know teach that not very often but there are some really good videos again on the internet on how to use sticky note marketing that you might reference just like business cards you might reference youtube a great resource however i use them like a business card and here's how yeah when i have a a brief conversation i say you know this person might be somebody i want to talk to about business instead of reaching out about the business right then at, at length i might keep it vague or i might give a little bit of business information just enough to pique curiosity not enough to satisfy it see here's the key too many people go for interest in their first conversation and quite often that's a mistake instead of going for interest in the first conversation you want to till the soil a little bit it's like you know your website your your conference call your recorded message your video, that's the seed you're planting in the ground to see if it sticks and grows you some fruit, grows you a plant or whatever, right? That To see if it takes root and actually bears you some fruit. See if it takes root and bears you some fruit. That's pretty cool. 
But in order to get the most response from your seed, it needs to be, the soil needs to be cultivated a little bit. You need to move the rocks out of the way, till it a little bit, so that seed can, can get down in the ground a few inches and take root, rather than just be on the surface and nothing happens. So how do you till the soil? You till the soil of, my, of the mind of your prospect by creating curiosity before you go for interest. Too many people try to make it so convenient that they go for interest right away and hope these people are ready to join. And that's an amateur. That's an amateur, amateur, amateur mistake. What's better is to go for curiosity. There are exceptions. In almost everything, there's an exception. But typically, unless you know for sure you're the exception, the better way to go is to go for curiosity first and till the soil of their mind a little bit by creating just a little bit of curiosity and see if they're willing to take some action on that. And how you do that is just giving them a teeny bit of information, but not too much. And then say, listen, I wish I could talk further, but I've got to go. I tell you what, here, and you hand them the sticky note with a pen and say, you know, write this down. And you get them to write down you know, your name, your number, maybe your email address, maybe your Facebook. Reach out to me and I'll Facebook you the information. Let's connect on Facebook. Or here's my website, which remember, I typically don't like to send links because people often don't go. They procrastinate and nothing happens. And, and once you give them the link, the curiosity factor is gone. They now have the power and the leverage. Until they see, have a link to what you're doing, you own the power. So it's better not to give the link until you've cleared the time to share the presentation. But there are exceptions in cold marketing. When you're out there just going through numbers in your daily life, especially if you live in a city or busy area where there's a lot of population, and you're bumping to new people all the time. In that case, you might give out your link but you might have them write it down rather than you give it to them in a card. See, if you hand them a card with your link on it, how invested are they in that information? What have they action have they taken to make an impression in their mind that they're interest, interested? See, when they take action, they're selling themselves. When you're taking all the action, they're not invested. So if you can get them to write it down in the sticky note, your link, your name, your phone number, or what have you, then they're becoming invested in the information. The other beautiful thing about the sticky note is it's not something they can put on, on their desk and they're gonna keep forever. There's, they know it's gonna get thrown away soon. So if they have any interest at all, they're more likely to think, I better look soon before this gets lost or thrown away. Whereas a business card, they think they can go to at any time for years to come and it takes away a little of the urgency. So a sticky note has a little more urgency to it. And if they write it down instead of you writing down, it makes a deeper impression on them and they're selling themselves because they are invested by writing it down by your direction, by your direction, your confidence. Hand them the sticky note and the pen here. Write this down real quick. You know, I've got something. It's kind of important. I don't have time right now, but write this down. i got something I want to share with you, you know. Whatever, depending on your people skills, the nature of the conversation, the nature of the relationship. I'm just giving you some ideas and you can figure that out. Just get them to invest rather than you invest only. And they will have, you will have a higher likelihood, a higher, let's put it this way, not a likelihood, but a higher possibility that they'll actually take action on it and look versus if they are not invested at all. So that's some thoughts on that. Now, if you're gonna use a business card, here's a few pro tips on that. I learned from this gentleman, his name's Charlie. He recruited over 300 people using a business card in a big city. And what he did, and, and out of that, he had uh, at least 12 organizations go out and, and turn into uh, successful organizations, which made him a seven figure earner in his company, which is, I mean, awesome, right? And he had a lot of fun doing this. What he'd simply do, he had his business card and he'd use it as a tool to leverage asking for their contact information. And here's how he did it. He'd say, you know, I got something I'd like to run by you, but now's not a good time for me. And obviously, you know, it's just, this isn't the time or place. Here's, I tell you what, here's my card. How do I get in contact with you? In fact, he said, you know, that's he'd ask people what they did 
And they'd say, whatever it is, he'd say, that's interesting. I work with a few people in that line of industry. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm in, I own my own business. I'm in the process of, uh, of expanding. Uh, I tell you what, here, here's my card. How do I get in contact with you? You know, or he'd say, I'm in the process of expanding. You know, he'd say, again, he'd say, what, so what do you do? You know, in small talk, it might be a line at a store or somebody that he bumps into in conversation out in the real world. And he'd say, so what do you do? And they'd tell him and say, oh, really? That's interesting. I work with a few people in that line of industry. Because even if they're not in his downline, they might be someone in the same company in that line of industry, right? I work with a few people in that line of industry. I, in fact, I, as a matter of fact, I own my own business. I'm in the process of expanding. Are you open-minded to side ventures? Are you open-minded to making some extra income? Are you open-minded to uh, profitable, profitable side ventures or side projects? If they say yes, then he'd say, I tell you what, here's my card. How do I get in contact with you? It really boils down to here's my card. How do I con get in contact with you? He doesn't say, here's my card, what's your number? That's offensive, that's pushy, that's salesy. He did it more low key. He said, here's my card, how do I get in contact with you? And let them decide how by offering it and let it be their idea. Now they're investing because it became their idea, not yours. You just said, how do I get in contact with you? Now here's the key, if they say, well, uh, but, but, but anything other than here's my number or you can reach me on Facebook, something that's high touch like a phone number or Facebook. If they just say, well, you can come here at work, I'm here most of the time, that's not good. That means that tells you they're not open to a further connection. They're putting barriers in your way. They're not really friendly people. But if they offer you their number, if they offer you to reach out and connect on Facebook, they are open to a connection. And if they're open to a connection, that's a convenient way to actually have a conversation with them or reach out, then that means that's a friendly person. See, people who are closed off are not gonna join you. People who are closed off, if they did join you or buy your product, are not likely to ever build a business because they're closed off unhappy people. People who are open to connection tend to be happy people. Happy people tend to be productive people. Productive people build a business. So you're looking for happy, productive, open people who are willing to connect, who are open to connection. And this is your way to find that out without chasing somebody down that ain't gonna ever do anything. It's a great way to filter out those you don't want to find those that you do. You're looking for the happy person. One happy person a month is better than 10 unhappy people that you chase and chase and chase and nothing happens. You're looking for 10 people who are happy enough to be open to connect. Those people are, will lead to something good. So here's my card. How do I get in contact with you? And that moment tells you what you want to know. Are they open to connection or not? Because if they're open to connection and you actually book an appointment to let them see a presentation, whether it be face-to-face -face or on a webinar while you're on the phone with them or a video while you're on the phone with them, that person is much more likely to actually join or try your product because they're open to the relationship. They're open to the connection, right? Another thing is instead of, use the word connect. I want to connect with you. I want to connect with you further. Here's my card. I've got something important I want to share with you. Probably it's not a fit, the takeaway. Probably it's a long shot. I don't know. I can't promise you anything, the takeaway. But I want to connect with you further. I've got something important I want to share with you because there's a chance, you know, just a shot in the dark. And I'd like to con con connect with you further. Here's my card. How do I get in contact with you? And let them share and that moment you'll know if they're open to connection by what they offer you or not the other thing is you can hand them a business card and have them write something so they're invested hand them a business card and have them write something on the back so they're invested so hopefully you have a business card that's not glossy that actually you can write on the back hand them a pen in your card and say here real quick write this down on the back of the card 
and let them write something, anything, be creative. You know, you could even give them the link right then if you want, even though that's a lower, lower, less effective. It can work, especially if you get them to invest to write down the link. The other thing is don't have your link on your card. The more vague your card is, the more powerful it is. Because if people already have your link, you lose all leverage. And they'll, well, let me look at it and I'll get to you, back to you if I'm interested. So you're, you're giving them an excuse not to connect if everything's on the card. Let your card be professional, but vague enough that they don't have enough information to make a decision on it. Another tip. Another tip. So those are some pro tips. You could even put, you know, your name, put your name, have them write your name. Wayne, you know, what time you're going to try to reach them or something, you know, and they can write that. Or uh, Rome says this is uh, important. And you can tell them to write that and they'll laugh, right? So anything to get them to invest and uh, be you know, involved in the process of the connection will increase your chances that they'll take it seriously and remember it and be willing and open to take action on it further. That's today's podcast episode. I hope that helps. I know it would help me. Uh, I don't know how this came across, but I do know that there's some golden nuggets in this episode, and I hope you go back and listen and take some notes because uh, this should help you and get you thinking it may be something you want to revisit in the future. So that's business cards. Yes, no, maybe so. And this is episode 39. Until next episode, thank you for joining me on the journey. And please share with those that you think this could benefit, even if they're in a friend in another company. I appreciate it. Thank you for sharing today's 365 Days of MLM to Freedom podcast. And remember to email your questions and comments directly to Rome at 365 Days of MLM at gmail.com. And until next time, we want to encourage you to join in on the journey.